What's happening? What's happening, family? It's your main man, TJ Chapman, host of the TJ Chapman Show. We are back again live with another edition of Talk Talk with head coach Doug Miller of the Orlando Predators. Good evening, sir. How you doing, buddy? Oh, man, like always, man. It's always a pleasure to grace your presence, sir. Good, good, yeah. Always glad to be here. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, um, coming off another disappointing loss, um, it seems to be the, the theme of this year, disappointing losses. But one thing about disappointing losses is when you learn from them, you capitalize off of them because you have no other place to go but up. Right. So let's get right into it. Um, you guys you guys ended up you guys ended up having to come off of a defeating zero points two weeks ago. You changed quarterbacks and this time you guys put up thirty points. However, on the defensive side of course, um, they're on the field more than, than they need to be. And in a losing effort, what is your take on this week's game or last week's game? Um, of course, it was a step forward, you know, coming off a, a loss of uh, scoring no points and being able to put up uh, 30 this game. Um, it still was a, a situation that we didn't want to be in, you know, because of course we want to win football games and be competitive. Um, a lot of mental mistakes during that game. Um, but we were, uh, we put a quarterback in a situation um, that was very tough. Uh, very tough for him to get, you know, his rhythm going. And um, it was a situation where, you know, we knew coming in it was going to be a tough game uh, simply because we was only able to get one practice in without a quarterback with a new offense. Right. Um, so him coming out and just being able to fight, fight for the team, fight for himself, fight for his family. Um, was huge for him to be able to stay in a football game and, and, and grind it out. Um, but like I said, this is a situation where we was able to put up 30. We, of course, we want to be able to put up more. Uh, defense is out on the field a lot. Uh, you know, part of that is, you know, offensive turnovers. Um, but a situation that we wouldn't like to be in and, and going to try to get better at, you know, as each game goes. Right. Now, you, you mentioned about you bringing in a new quarterback. This actually makes the fifth quarterback this season. We have a few games left. What do you think about bringing this quarterback in, helping the team? And you alluded last week that you want to keep having guys come in until you find that right chemistry. Uh, based on the time preparation, what do you feel about this new quarterback coming in? Um. Matt is a good quarterback, you know, coming out of another league. He he fits the stature about, you know, 6'7", 230, look like a Ben Roethlisberger um, out there. Um, but we're looking for, you know, like I said before, that fit for a guy to come in um, that can throw the ball, that can throw completions, throw completions to the right team as well. Um, but bringing him in, you know, I think it was a step forward, you know. Uh, how do I want to say this? Some things are out of my hands. Right. Um, because we do have, you know, uh, different positions where um, decisions are made uh, on the behalf of the organization. So uh, us being able to stick with him for the rest of the year uh, to see how he can progress and possibly um, get us to win a few ball games. Because once again, you know, somebody's on our side because we're still, you know, one game out of the playoffs here. So. Um, we're trying to see if we can get these guys on board to believe in the fight and to go out there and, and, and win a few ball games and, and get into the tournament. Okay. So even after a disappointing loss, you guys are still one game out of the playoffs. And there's, what, three games left. Right. So we don't want to, you know, jump ahead. But when you think about it, with one game out of the playoffs, what do you guys have to do in order – to get that final that final spot. It's all about motivation. It's all about the will to want to win, the will to believe that you still can win after having such a disappointing season. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that that happens that 
uh, add up to why we're the way that we are right now. Um, but if, as a coach, as a leader, if I can get these guys to believe uh, that we can go out and win ball games, um, we can possibly get into the tournament. Now, you mentioned about going with Matt the rest of the way. He's going to join us on the segment a little bit later. Um, are there going to be any more changes made within the players' personnel with these next few games with you guys only being one out, uh, one game out of the playoffs? Um, you would hope not, but realistically, it is. You know, like I said once again, some things are out of my hands. Um, but yeah, if there's you know a person that's out there that gives us a better chance at winning a ball game, then that's what we'll do. Um, but yeah, you would like n not to make any more changes. Um, but obviously, the group that we have right now um, is not up to par. So, is there a particular person, particular position, or what? What? What's going to make it work the rest of the seasons where there's more cuts to come? Because I mean, you guys are constantly uh, rotating guys in and out. So is it a particular position or a player that you're looking for to go for the rest of the season? Um, again, it's not a particular player or position. Uh, when watching film, uh, you watch these guys, you know, um, play the game that they love. However, if it's not up to par, uh, if they're not doing their job, like Bill Belichick says, do your job. If you're not doing your job, then yes, we would try to find somebody to do your job. Uh, so, you know, after watching film and, you know, you want to stick with the guys that you have. We're, we're two, and, what, two and nine right now, but we're two and nine for a reason. And like I always say, it starts from the coaching and it trickles down to the players. Um, but if we don't have those warriors that I'm looking for uh, on a consistent basis, then that's what causes uh, players to get cut and released and us bringing in the new players. So with three games remaining uh, in the season, changes are still going to be made. You've already solidified that the quarterback position is going to stay put. Now it's just pieces being able to fit around him to be able to get that final spot in the playoffs. How many days did it take for the new quarterback coming into play to, to do as good as he did for the, the time frame that he was brought in? Um, you usually want to prepare the full week, um, especially with the guy, a new guy coming in learning an offense. Um, but Mother Nature said different this week or That's last it. week. Uh, so we wasn't able to prepare um, the way that we wanted to. We basically was, uh, was able to get just one day of practice in. It was a lot of mental work. Uh, but again, in football, uh, you want to still be able to come out and be physical every day in practice and in the ball game. So it was a tough week for us um, to try to prepare to get a brand new quarterback in uh, to come in and, 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 and play good football. Absolutely. So, um, so Coach, we're going we're gonna to pause real quick for um, a quick break. Uh, we're going to go into our next segment. We're actually going to have uh, Matt Parsons join us the new, uh, newly acquired quarterback, okay. uh, come sit on a set with us and, and, and talk about his journey and, and his gameplay on Saturday. So, guys, keep it locked. The best is yet to come. Coach Doug Miller. Welcome back. Welcome back. Joining us on set of Chalk Talk, uh, we have newly acquired quarterback Matt Parsons. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Oh, man. Uh, you had a very interesting journey getting here. Uh, you recently played for an arena team uh, not too long ago. And next thing you know, you get a phone call from the Predators wanting you to be their starting quarterback. Um, what was it like? Sitting at work on a Wednesday, about to leave work. It was like 4 o'clock. And uh, I get a text message from Coach P.J. Jack. All it says is, can you still throw the ball? Ah, interesting. <laughs> said, yeah, what do you need? I thought maybe you needed me to come out and help with the kids camp or something. And he goes, I want you to come out and try out for the Preds. I said, I'll be there when you need me. He goes, at 5.30. It's already 4 o'clock. So, wow. I left work right then and there and jumped in the car and went to practice. So, you got to call on Wednesday. You got to practice that same day. Same day. 
and you practice on Thursday. Yep. Or was it a walkthrough? Or uh, Wednesday we got rained out, so we didn't even get a chance to practice up Wednesday. Thursday we had a little practice, about an hour long practice, uh, the day before the game on July 4th that morning. So technically, you really didn't have no time to prepare. Correct. Gotcha. Now, Coach I Miller. As prepared as I would like to. Now, Coach Miller, he indicated earlier that you know sometimes uh, you, you gotta you gotta be ready. Of course, you gotta be ready for that call. And unlike what happened two weeks ago with a shutout, uh, you were able to come in and you know put put up some put up some good numbers. You put, you you uh, scored th uh, three three touchdown passes, uh, even though it says you also threw seven interceptions. Seven interceptions. However, with that much time prepared for the game. Did you expect to do better, or did Absolutely. it go according to the plan? No, I thought I was going to do a lot better than that. Um, off night on my part, definitely without any practice, that still should, should have been a lot better than what, how I played. So I can't can't use that as an excuse. So Coach Miller, do you think that was an excuse? How do you think he played? Um. As an athlete, you always think you're going to come in and, and do well, you know, because um, an athlete's heart is so deep into the game uh, that they feel like any athlete feel like they can come off the couch and make a difference. Um, at the quarterback position, that is not quite uh, the answer or what's going to happen. So him coming in off the couch, you know, like you said, being at work, only able to get one day in, we knew it was going to be rough, you know, and I'm pretty positive. Um, that Matt will next game uh, flourish and, and be a lot better than what he was this week. Absolutely, and and you alluded earlier about Mother Nature, All right. having to you know play a part in it. Unfortunately, this is a game that you can't you can't practice in the weather because you know you don't play in the weather during the game time. All right. Now, with that being said, you've already indicated that Matt is your guy going the rest of the way out. You guys are one way out of the playoffs. Matt, how do you feel about the vote of confidence knowing that you're going to be the guy the rest of the season after being the fifth quarterback being brought in during the season? I mean, that's a huge, huge thing, huge weight off my shoulders. Um, all I got to do is go out and play football. That's it. And that's what I feel like I do best. I don't got to worry about any of the politics or anything that has to go along with that. I just got to go out and throw the football and first downs and score, score points. Now, Coach, he mentioned about finding the right guys to build that chemistry to win football games. With the roster that you've seen so far, do you feel that you have the weapons to be successful going the rest of the season and perhaps getting that final playoff seed with only being one game out? Absolutely. I mean, all these men are here for a reason. They're all professionals. They're all handpicked by the coaches. There's more than enough talent to go out there and win football games, especially at this level. Um, I don't see why we can't go out there and put up 80 points on the team week in, week out. I mean, they're all grown professional men who know how to play the game of football. It's just coming together as a team with chemistry. If, if, if you could speak on it just a little bit, from what you've seen thus far, what do you feel that there's uh, improvement needed for you to be successful the rest just, of the way out? I would say the chemistry. I mean, knowing my guys, knowing knowing where my receivers are going to be, knowing my, my offense alignment and certain ways that they like to block certain people. Um, that all takes, I take that into account every single time. In the huddle, uh, being with an offensive coordinator, knowing what he likes to call, knowing what I like to run. Um, it's, it's a lot of things. Now, so, you, now you speak on offensive coordinator. Um, you and the, the new OC, um, have some chemistry together. Um, you know what he likes to do. Um, he's, he's been in this game for a while. Uh, he coached it. He's played in it. Now, how comfortable are you with this new OC? Uh, I'm very comfortable with him. Um, we know, we've known each other for a long time. Uh, played for him for a couple different teams, an outdoor and indoor. Um, I'm very confident in his ability to put me in the best position to make plays. Now, Coach, speaking of this OC, was it – by any chance that this 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 chemistry that you call coming into play, teaming him up with a guy that he's played for and played with, was it by surprise? 
No, it wasn't by surprise. You know, when you're out and you're searching uh, for different players, uh, sometimes you go back into your Rolodex and you say, okay, you know what? I had a guy that played with me a couple years ago, uh, pretty good athlete. We need a quarterback. Let's sign him. So it wasn't a surprise that uh, P.J. brought in someone that he knew um, opposed to bringing in somebody um, that's either with another team that we have to trade for or somebody that's away in a different state and have to, you know, fly him in town and get him here. So, no, it wasn't by surprise at all that uh, he brought in someone that he had a relationship with. Wow, that's, that's great to know. And, Matt, you've already indicated that you are going to lead this team the rest of the season. Uh, you've been given that vote of confidence for the rest of the season. You've already indicated you have the players to get there. What's one thing that you want to tell Predators Nation going forward? Um, just continue giving us everything you got. I mean, Predators Nation, they got the heart. I mean, they're the best fans I've seen in Oregon football ever. Growing up, five, six, seven years old, watching Predator football games, they're the best fans in the league, always. Um, when we went into the jungle, it was it was mayhem. And, and to, to see these people 25 years later still, still showing as much pride as they have for the Predators, it's, it's something special. Wow, I'm, 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 glad, I'm glad you were able to get that phone call. Uh, you're, you're a hell of a guy, hell of an athlete. Um, most importantly, you know, good friend. Um, I've, I've played with you, you know, a couple of seasons. And so I, I know what the Predators are getting. And the um, only thing I can say, like I told Coach last week, got to keep moving forward. Of course. Because you only got one place to go, and that's up. So best of luck the rest of the season, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Best of luck. We'll be back. Welcome back, welcome back. Uh, we're on the final segment, piece of Chalk Talk with the Orlando Predators head coach, Doug Miller. And uh, we have one of our uh, faithful fans who would like to have a question answered. Right. Go ahead, Milton. Okay, a question. Uh, I'm an organization, Pred Nation, and I got a lot of people. They don't really say a lot. They call me, I guess they figure since I've been a part of Predator organization for a long time. Everybody keep asking me, uh, are the Predators going to be back next year for one? And number two, is Coach Miller going to be returning also? Um, good question. The, that is a very good question. Uh, predators will be back next year. Um, and, you know, again, to bring that the atmosphere back to Orlando to give people something to talk about. You know, I was talking to some fans the other day about it, and they was talking about how bad we are, you know, and how we need to win football games and go back to the old times. And I told them, what were you talking about this time last year? Nothing. Nothing at all. So the fact that we have something to talk about is a great thing for the fans, you know, because – we could be in a situation where their, the Orlando team isn't here or would not be here. So the fact that we're here um, is a great thing. And yes, we will be back next year. Um, will I be back next year? I would love to be back next year. I would love to be able to take the bull by the horn and bring back old Predator football, you know? Uh, so if given that opportunity to be here next year um, and to start a season um, right when the off season starts, to go out and recruit players and get the people that I want um, and to find that chemistry that we're looking for, I would love to grab the bull by the horn and take this thing all the way to the top. Well, Coach, me, myself, and a lot of my Pred Nation friends, we're praying and hoping that you are back. Simple fact, that way give you a chance to show people what you can really do. Right. I mean, everything has been so short with us you know, we started late, everybody was way ahead of us, and I've always told you, I got your back, I'll right. always be behind you. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a negative person, I've always been positive, and I'm, I'm praying and hope that you come back, because I know you got in your heart that you can bring the winning tradition back to the Orlando Predators. Right, right, and, and like I said, Milton, I appreciate everything, appreciate the support. Been here since 2001, so I do know uh, what the tradition of Predator football is. And I, I would just love to be able to bring that back, you know. And there's no excuses, uh, Milton, to tell you the truth, that we started late and 
Uh, we haven't built that chemistry because, you know, we were four or five months behind everyone else. Because at the end of the day, it's football, you know, and you still want to be able to get guys to come out and, and understand the tradition of Predator football uh, and most importantly, understand the love that they have for the game. So, you know, with only two wins, um, I think we still could do better no matter what. So I think that's an excuse uh, that we as the fans use. Um, I try not to use it as a coach uh, because my job is to motivate these guys and get them to come out and play hard-nosed football. And um, we, we just haven't been doing that right now, but we will. Okay, thank you, Coach. Thank, thank you, Milton. Sir, thank you for joining us on the set. Thank you. We have another, uh, we got time for one more uh, question and answering session. Um, come on up, sir. You're no stranger to the show. Thanks Welcome. for calling me, sir. Thank you. What's your question for Coach Miller today? Coach, let me ask you a question as far as, like, beginning of the season. I know we had a... Uh, rush start and putting everything together. What's a good, in your opinion, time frame to bring players in to build a team before the first game? We had like two weeks, I believe. Right. We we only had. I think it was it was a little longer than two weeks. We had I think 32 or 33 days. I remember counting it down. Um, you um, as an organization, as a as a coach, you start your recruiting process the day after the last game. Um, where you go out and you start reaching out to players once that free agency period opens up. You go out and you reach out to guys. Um, it may be guys on your team now that's recruiting for you because they know they'll be here next year and, right. and they want certain players that they know that as a coaching staff we would like. Um, so, yeah, you start your recruiting process as soon as possible um, simply because you want to get the best group of 24 guys that's out there. Right. You know, in order to do that, you, you definitely have to be able to offer guys um, different things to come and play that's legal right. uh, to right. come and play for you. So, sure. yeah, that that uh, so you you want before the season, probably four to five months to be able to do that. And that way you can take your time right. and you can literally handpick your guys um, that you want or that you're looking for to be a part of the organization. Because sometimes it's not just about you know, a guy being athletic or a guy being the best player in the league. Right. Because you can have that on your team and it could be a cancer in the locker room. So you want to find that those guys, that chemistry of guys that can bond together, you know, because you may have a guy um, that may not be as athletic as someone else is out there. And the fans will say, well, well why not get him? Well, not. It's not about that because winning starts in the locker room. Absolutely. On the field, it carries over to the field. But it starts at practice and in that locker room. When you're in a locker room and you can laugh and joke and uh, do whatever with your brothers, it's, it's awesome because now you take that to the field and you know that the guy to my right and the guy to my left has my back. And if you can trust that process, you're golden. So <clears throat> you want to start pretty early. Yeah, I, I've been with the team in one sense or another since the beginning and you guys, We've had a good group of individuals, and like I agree with you, some of them may be, uh, you know, on the field is awesome, but then they're by themselves in the locker room. That doesn't help the team at all. Right. Now, let me ask you another question here if I got time. With, as right now we're two and nine. Right. How difficult do you think recruiting players from different teams and free agencies to come to the city beautiful. Right. Um, well, Lando is the cream of the crop. Um, anytime you're talking arena football. Absolutely. Uh, because everybody want to come see Mickey Mouse. You know, the weather is great. The fans are great. The city is great. Um, so uh, recruiting guys or getting guys, you know, to come here, being that we're 2-9, uh, it's not difficult. You know, a lot of times when you have a team – um, and the record is not great. Some guys feel like, okay, I can help this team. You know, right. it's sometimes it's tougher to uh, get people to go play for the Patriots than it is to the Jets, sure. because you go to the Jets, you feel like, okay, I can play here. You know, right. I I can earn a spot here. Well, when you go to the Patriots, they set in stone. Sure. So I got to break this wall down in order to be able to get into the organization. So being two and nine uh, doesn't hurt recruiting. Um, 
it, it makes it not easier, but the process uh, for guys to come in and feel like they can play, uh, they would want to come. Because guys don't, you know, we're athlete, athletes and, and we're competitive. But a lot of guys would like the easy way in, you know, where they see an offensive lineman that may not be that good, oh, I'm better than him, so let me go to Orlando, you know. Yeah. Um, so it, it doesn't hurt at all. Gotcha. I mean, and on a positive note right there, the Orlando Predators have such a tradition. Right. You know, which you've been a part of for a long right. time. I was a season ticket holder for 21 years. Right. So I've been with the Predators through thick and thin, too. Right. Never, it's not always been championship season after championship right. season. Right. So, I mean, I, I'm with you 100%. I'm behind you. Whatever we can do as fans. You know, let us know, and we'll definitely give you our opinion. Some people's opinions are a little harsher right. than others, right. but it's going to come. Right. You know, it, it's it's part of the game. You got to take the good with the bad. Exactly. You know, uh, some of the things I've agreed with and some of the things I've defended, it's like, yeah, we're an expansion team. It's our first year back, but, you know, we're a young building team. Mm -hmm. So, Coach, I'm with you. 100%, brother. Thank you very much. Always. All right. Thank you, Thank you for Jay. us on the set, my Thank friend. You. Absolutely. You absolutely. absolutely. All right. And um, and now we got time for coaches' final thoughts. Oh. It's always a segment that catches me by surprise. Right. You know. Um, you know, first of all, I, I like to say, you know, to all the fans um, that I'm very appreciative to be a part of this organization and to be coaching this historic organization. I was watching film um, yesterday, I believe, and the film has no sound to it. And I was telling our owner, Nate, how we have the greatest fans in the game. You know, here we are down 30 points or so, and we catch a first down. And you could see the excitement, you know, from the fans. Uh, we score a touchdown, and you see everybody gets up, and, and they're just excited, you know, to score touchdowns. So I'd just like to say to the fan base, man, that I'm very appreciative. Uh, I love you guys, and I know you guys have love for the team as well. And just trust the fact that, you know, we're in a, a season um, that's tough. We're in a season that's, in a sense, rebuilding. Uh, we're in a season where we're trying to find the best of the best to come out and play for us. And, and it's not easy, but I'm very appreciative of the fans and all the support that they have given. Even the negative comments, I appreciate it because, you know, you got people just, just being true to themselves, being true to the organization. Absolutely. And, and, and I really, really appreciate it. You know, over in, 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 uh, in Africa, there's a, a gazelle that wakes up every morning. Every morning he wakes up and he says, I have to run faster than these lions out here every day because he don't want to be eaten. So. Every day it's a lion that wakes up. Say, I got to be faster than the slowest, or I got to run faster than the slowest gazelle in order for me to eat. Hmm. The key is everybody wakes up every morning and they have to run. In order to eat, you got to get going. And that's one thing we have to do as an organization, as a team, we have to run. Run faster than this next team play better than this next team, execute better than this next team, score more touchdowns than this next team, get more sacks than the next team. If we can have that mentality that we know we have to run or be better than our opponent, then we won't fail. And that's what we have to do. Wow. I believe it. Spoken words by Coach Miller. And that was some great final thoughts. You guys have the Cobras coming up on the road. The road hasn't been favorable to you guys. But with that speech in that locker room, you guys already did it once before. You went up there. You handled business. Right. You executed better. You ran faster, threw more touchdowns, and you came out victorious. I believe you guys will get that same energy with this new guy as well. Yes, sir. I believe in them. I believe in the organization. You only got one place to go, and that's up. Join us next week for another edition of Talk Talk with Coach Doug Miller, Orlando Predators. Go Preds.